Hey everybody, um, just want to hit a few topics that are covered in Chapter 3 of your ATI Nursing Leadership and Management book. Some of the terminology that nursing students kind of get mixed up, so just want to go over them, try to reinforce them. Autonomy, uh, which is one of the six ethical principles uh, basically is about the right of a person to make one's own decisions. So if you have a patient that has been on dialysis for several years and decides that they don't want to continue dialysis and they're of sound mind, uh, they have that right. Um, if a patient, say, is not competent to make decisions and let's say uh, they have advanced directives, the person who has the durable power of attorney over them can make the decisions instead. Beneficence, basically care that is in the best interest of the patient. Um, that would be, say, a patient uh, broke their hip, they come into the ER and you um, get them pain medication as soon as you can. Um, so that, again, is kind of in their best interest. Fidelity is keeping promises to the patient um, about their care. So if a patient uh, knows they're dying, um, you know they're dying, but the family doesn't know they're dying, if they say to you, please do not tell my family about my diagnosis, um, you using fidelity would have to keep that promise to the patient and it does also fall underneath HIPAA as well. Justice, that is equal and fair treatment without bias. Um, that would be, say, an example. Um, you work in a clinic that provides free services each month uh, to a community, but let's say per day um, you only have 30 appointment slots. You have to come up with a fair and equal way um, to determine who gets those 30 spots um, that does not incorporate any type of bias. Um, Non-malfeasance, basically that is to do no harm. I kind of emphasize the no, um, just to ho help you remember do no harm. And veracity is basically duty to tell the truth, which I think that is pretty straightforward. Um, some acts are considered criminal um, when in healthcare. Um, there is such thing as a tort, which is basically a wrongful act or an infringement of a right other than under contract leading to civil legal liability. There are three different types of torts. We'll talk about unintentional, quasi-intentional, and intentional. Negligence is basically practice that does not meet the expected standards of care and can place a patient at risk for injury. That could be, for example, um, an elderly patient who is unable to move on their own should be turned every two hours and you do not provide that care. That would be negligence. Um, malpractice um, is um, professional negligence. Let's say um, you have a patient with heart failure, you're giving them digoxin, um, you give them too much, uh, they have overdose and they die. Um, that would be malpractice. Quasi-intentional torts, invasion of privacy, um, that's in the intrusion or breach of confidentiality and also falls underneath HIPAA laws, um, but that is, say, a person um, who's semi-famous comes into the ED um, with a DUI and you share that information about them. Um, defamation, that's false communication with regard for the truth with the intent to harm a person's reputation. Two types, there's label and slander. Uh, label is defamation in writing or in, or in photograph. Slander is defamation in spoke, spoken word. Ways that I remember the difference of those, you can look at the word label. I think of lines like lines on a piece of paper that it's written or slander, S for spoken word, defamation in spoken word. Intentional torts, um, you have assault, that is conduct of one person that causes fear in another. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be um, physical assault, it can be verbal assault. Battery is the wrongful physical contact with a person that involves injury or offensive con contact. And that last part's really important because it can include, say, touching a patient without their permission. 
So before you do anything that's invasive or, or say, touching areas of a patient that are private, um, you need to have permission, or it can be considered battery. False imprisonment, that's basically confined or restraining a person against their will. Say if you have a person in the emergency room that you know that needs care and they're wanting to leave, if you try to restrain them or, let's say, lock them in a room, that can be considered false imprisonment. As a nurse, you have duty to report certain things, impaired coworkers, um, whether you think they're drinking or under the influence of drugs, um, you need to report that. And obviously, depending on what the infraction is, um, you start with your nurse, nurse manager, charge nurse, and kind of move up from there. Diverting medication, if you suspect one of your coworkers is um, not, say, giving pain medication, to um, Miss Smith in room 101 um, because Miss Smith's pain is not getting any better, but your coworker is acting kind of strange and you suspect diversion, um, you need to report that. You need to also report abuse and you need to report uh, communic communicable diseases uh, to the proper agency. Disruptive behavior, unfortunately, uh, there's an old saying that nurses eat their young. Um, lateral violence is basically between two individuals of the um, same professional level. So a nurse, um, a, a nurse to another nurse, lateral violence um, can be gossiping, verbally abusing them, um, incivility is a part of lateral violence. Incivility can be an action that is considered rude or intimidating uh, or even insulting that can include teasing, joking, uh, dirty looks, um, or uninvited touching. If you ever experience this or witness it, uh, please report it uh, because unfortunately um, it does happen. So those are just some topics that I just want to reinforce from this chapter. If you do have any questions, please post on the uh, appropriate discussion board.